So, right off the bat, I have to tell you, solar energy storage is a Wild West show. We're entering a period where we're developing alternative technologies and renewables, and nobody really knows what to do with them, and so they're mucking around with all kinds of stuff. Some really simple stuff. I mean, if you remember the sand battery, all they're doing there is taking wind energy, turning it into heat and storing it in sand. You could do exactly the same thing with solar. Here's a solar en um, energy, heat up some sand, and you'll store that energy as heat, which you then can release. And there is, in fact, a uh, place in Texas which does that with concrete and bits of stone. They've got some lumps of rock in a big container. They heat up from the solar, store that heat, and then release it later as energy. So it's a way of storing the energy using rocks or sand. Another infamous way of doing it is what's called molten salt. They get some salt, melt it at five or six hundred degrees centigrade, keep it molten, pump it around a bit and do a bit of heat exchange, and then they can drive turbines with. Yet another way is to use gas. You can shuttle the gas between a hot and cold container and use that temperature difference. Now what you should be noticing really is that there are two main ways of harnessing this solar energy. You can harness it as electricity from photovoltaic cells or you can harness the heat of the sun directly or you can transfer the electricity to heat and store that. So all of these different systems tend to fall into two main categories, direct electrical energy storage, which is your battery system, and then thermal energy storage, which is all of the kinds that I've just been listing. These are all pretty well-known systems and represent the same thing you have when you have the heat tubes on your roof and you collect the hot water in domestic hot water system. But there are somewhat more fringe versions of this where instead of using either the electricity generated or the heat generated, we use a mechanical transformation. You basically can drag a big rock up a hill when you've got lots of solar and then when you need extra energy and there's no sun, drop that rock down, connect it to a generator, hey presto. Of course, these things are a bit bigger than a rock up a hill and what they tend to be is massive concrete where it's dropped down mine shafts. So into this frontier environment where basically nobody really knows what they're doing, everybody's trying everything and if your idea catches on there's billions of dollars to be made, into this comes a new contender. And that is the MOST project. MOST stands for Molecular Solar Thermal Energy Store. I think they chose an acronym because it's kind of cool, isn't it? They're the MOST. Anyway, that's what they chose and it uses a different mechanism. I mean, we've looked at electricity, we looked at direct thermal store, we looked at mechanical conversion. MOST uses a chemical conversion. No bornadine goes in and quadricycline comes out. Now, that conversion from one to the other happens because of UV light. And the idea of light hitting something and causing a chemical reaction and a change, of course, there's nothing new about that, as every photographer will tell you. This thing, it's a blueprint. And actually, it's as an old age old method. You paint the top with a white liquid called Prussian white. Then you put a tracing paper on with your drawing, stick it in the sun. The Prussian white is turned into Prussian blue by the action of the sun. There is, in fact, a battery, a self recharging solar battery based on this. This is the paper for it. They constructed a solar cell out of this to test that effect, to see whether the sun's energy could do that and store that energy until you wanted to use it. So effectively, a solar cell stroke battery that charges itself in the sun. So what's really neat about the most system is it's liquid. And because it's liquid, you can pump it backwards and forwards. That's super neat, eh? What's not so neat is the efficiency. It's actually only around about 3%. Now they have managed to build themselves a little thermoelectric generator with this. I think it was in association with the Chinese. So they basically stuck a little system on top of a Peltier and got some results from it. Now, on the positives for the MOST system, it is looking at a different way, that is a chemical way of doing that job of so uh, storing solar. Let's face it, 
It's very sciencey and very neat and intriguing, so that's really cool. However, there's no information on the costs. Terrible efficiency. It's really in quite early stages of its development, so maybe it'll develop. But it's got a lot of stiff competition in what is effectively a jungle, and the one that's going to emerge the winner, well, it's going to be the one that um, is cost effective. It's going to be cheap to build, easy to maintain, it's going to be quick to build. You can't be spending 40 years over building something like that or we're in real trouble. Those kind of things, economic considerations and practical considerations, are much more likely to win out against the hmm, bells and whistles science. But I do like the fact that they're looking at it differently and looking at things differently is always a door opener, it always lifts your head out of the box. I mean, we mentioned the solar rechargeable battery. That's something to be looking at, certainly, just because it's of great interest and really very much cheaper. But most is promising in many different ways, perhaps not so much in coming to realisation. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.